Hey, what's up, everybody? Scott Casper, glad to be alongside Tony Hager for another exciting edition of Global Wrestling News. Well, Tony, the second match of the All-Star Classic has been announced. It'll feature Cleveland native Ty Walls, and he'll return home to face off against Wisconsin's All-American Connor Medbury. Walls has been a perennial power at heavyweight and is coming off a personal best fourth-place finish just last year. Medbury finished fourth in 2015, but took last year off to train for the Olympic trials. We talked with two of college wrestling's top heavyweights about the upcoming clash in Cleveland. I wrestled in freestyle a couple times at the University of Nationals two years ago. And then uh, we also wrestled for third and fourth at the Midland Championships. He's a guy that you have to be tactical against. He's about as like wide as a refrigerator. So there's <laughs> it kind of limits your offense a little bit. So you have to really pick and choose your shots against a big guy like that. Plus he's he's athletic. He's he's fast. So he's got a he's got a great offense of his own too. So you just gotta gotta wrestle a good match in order to beat him. So hopefully I can have a decent amount of fans there. Uh, my family is definitely not gonna have any excuses for not being able to make it to this one. So that's a little hint for all of them. But um uh. I think Cleveland's a great wrestling city and just the surrounding area outside of it. I think the whole area is great when it comes to knowing wrestling, having people be interested in wrestling, and hopefully there'll be a lot of turnout. Obviously, it's a little different area than Atlanta, Georgia is. That maybe isn't an area that's known for wrestling as much, but Northeast Ohio definitely is. So there should be a good turnout of people. The fans should have a very good understanding of what's going on in the matches and I think it'll be a great environment to wrestle in. I'm very excited for it. I think it was kind of a no-brainer. This is a great event and one that I've never been to and always always paid attention to. Obviously, it's got great matchups, so I'm looking forward to being part of it. I've wrestled him a few times in a couple different styles, so um, he's familiar, but it's also been a little bit. It's been a couple of years, and so obviously we're both, we both train hard and want to improve, so I'm looking forward to it. He's a heavyweight that scores a lot of points and likes to get in a lot of wrestling positions for a big guy, which... We both like to get out there and score points, and so um, I think that's good for the fans and good for the sport. Just um, the heavyweight weight class has definitely changed quite a bit. Um, kind of started when I was first got into college, and so um, keeping that aggressive style and looking to score points is definitely good for the sport. Well, with Adam Kuhn taking a red shirt up at Michigan, I got to believe heavyweight's wide open. Tony, your thoughts? Well, Kyle Snyder is there. I mean, it kind of depends on you know how he's going to transition from freestyle to folk style. Obviously, it wasn't an issue last year. Uh, there, there's been talks of him going down to 97 again. So, kind of that weight class is really up in the up in the air. I believe I saw somewhere that Tom Ryan said that he will be at heavyweight. So, until we all get this uh, figured out, see who, where uh, Kyle Snyder is going to go. It's really anybody's game if Kyle Snyder isn't there. Well. Your point, exactly. The NWCA also released a 197-pound matchup. It'll feature Minnesota's Brett Farr and Princeton's Brett Harner. Harner a little bit of an unknown. Yeah, I would say he's an unknown really just because of where he, he wrestled. He wrestled at Princeton, known for their academics, not athletics. He was the first AA All-American since 2003 for the school. So, uh, you know, they kind of... Got a, got a little bit of limelight last year. This will definitely, could be his coming out party if he can uh, pull off a win in Cleveland this year. So uh, great to see Princeton back in this uh, event. I will tell you, both these guys scored bonus points by the bunches last year. So expect some activity at 97 at the All-Star Classic. Another one, runner-up, Isaac Jordan of Wisconsin will take on Missouri All-American Daniel Lewis. Yeah, Isaac Jordan, he's just absolutely dangerous from the top position. If you get rolling around with him on the bottom trying to work, you know, switches and sit outs, you're going to get put on your back and you're going to give up a lot of points. So, you know, on the other end, Lewis, breakout year last year, his redshirt freshman year. He picked up Mac, uh, all, you know, freshman of the year award honors. You know, Lewis is really, really good on his feet. Jordan's really good on the mat. So this is a good contrasting style. So I'm excited to see this one in Cleveland as well. All right, Miles Martin versus Gabe Dean has also been finalized. How do you think Martin will fare at 185? Uh, this is a huge matchup here for the NWC All-Star Classic. They've been needing a match like this. Uh, Miles j jumping up a little bit in weight class. I really don't know where he's at sitting you know, naturally, if he's cutting now or if he really is bumping a lot. So I think uh, that strength is going to come into a play here with Dean. So if he's able to to work out with his quickness and go to outside shots. Miles is going to take the match, but Dean definitely has a strength advantage here. I couldn't agree with you more. All right, high school wrestling returns to Carver Hawkeye Arena. We'll talk about that. That's after this short timeout. You're watching GWN, powered by McBride Mass.
right now, get any large original or flatbread Supreme Pizza for only $13.99. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit cookiesbbq.com. Cookies is the one. for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. All right, welcome back to Global. Hey, IA Wrestle has set the stage for their second Night of Conflict event at Carver Hawkeye Arena, that famous place in Iowa City. Night of Conflict has boasted some of the best high-level matchups in the country. The dual-style event touts a clash of elite wrestlers, one from Iowa, one from a contrasting state, and has some unique rules as well. Tony, it's your event. Explain. Well, this, the biggest thing that sets us apart from other events is, one, we're in Carver Hawkeye Arena, and two, Everybody's wanting more action in folk style, so we have implemented the push-out rule. I like it. This year, some things that have changed uh, will be it's only going to be from the neutral position. Last year, we did it from from uh, the bottom, and it just didn't work out so well. So expect wrestlers to, to stay on their feet, to stay in the center, be a little bit more aware of these rules in, in a folk style setting. All right, let's get to the matchups. I'm sure you're excited for each bout, but what are the main event matchups? We have 13 loaded matches here next Friday, featuring 17 wrestlers in the top 20. We have nine in the top 10, ranked by flow. You know, it's hard to narrow this down, really, but you gotta go with the co-main event here. Number two ranked, Caden Gefeller from Oklahoma. Taking on Illinois' number four, Jamie Hernandez, coming into town. Gefeller has a Super 32, yeah. Fargo, Flow National titles. I mean, he's been there, done it all, and it's landed him the number one ranked overall recruit in the 2017 class. Hernandez is a three-time Fargo All-American, was in the U.S. Cadet World Team Finals. He's 61st ranked overall recruit in the 2017 class, so not right up there, but this is going to be a huge clash. I mean, it looks like the main event is a top-five matchup between Ohio's Jared Campbell and Colorado's Colton Schultz. These boys are traveling a long way for the event and putting those high rankings on the line. Yeah, they're coming from both sides of the country. This is easily the biggest matchup that we've been able to put together since this event has been in conception. I mean, number one overall recruit, Recruit Colton Schultz in the 2019 class. You know, the coaches come into this event it is very special to bring this guy to put this ranking on the line, but Campbell is ranked right above him. He's made his college decision. He's a little bit more of a veteran. He's headed to Missouri right. next year. And as far as, uh, you know, his accolades go, this guy has uh, extreme uh, experience on freestyle in the folk style scene. Schultz is a little bit more Greco centric, so this should be very interesting from their feet. Could see some high flying throws at 220 pounds, which you're not you know typically seen. What about Schultz? You know Schultz, uh, like I said, he he's got some Greco background. Out of all the matches, uh, you know this is I think going to be the hardest one that he's had so far. Really tough to pick a winner here, but uh, ex I expect somebody to uh, make a big throw here in the in the first or second period. That's uh, really going to set the the match off. I'm going to go with experience, and I picked Jared Campbell to get the job done. And I think you know what the undercard is almost as exciting as the main events. All of them really have a, a story behind them. All of them are going to have a little bit of hype, but none other. Than Carter Cox versus Noah File, both guys from Iowa. You know, 
Fi was able to beat Cox early in the year by fall, and then Cox ended up getting Fi at the state wrestling tournament when it really counted. And there's been a lot, a lot of talk, a lot of smack talk on social media from the Cox camp. So I'm excited to get this match underway. They're going to be the first match off the gate starting at 7 o'clock. All right, how about this? Madrigal, D. Emilio Renteria. Man, there are high-profile wrestlers all over their joint. Tickets are on sale at the address you see on your screen. It's Night of Conflict kicking off the 2016-2017 season. It's at 7 o'clock Central at the famed Carver Hawkeye Arena, Friday, October 14th. We hope to see you there. After the break, the University of Missouri recruit Jared Campbell joins the program to talk about his matchup at the Night of Conflict. That's next on GWN, presented by Casey's General Stores. Homemade crust, fresh meats and vegetables, 100% real mozzarella. There ain't nothing like the smell of a homemade pizza when it comes out of the oven. Of course, those pine tree air fresheners smell pretty darn good, too. Casey's, famous for pizza. Introducing your favorite dip on a pizza. Pick up the all-new spinach artichoke chicken pizza today. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. All right, Ohio's Jared Campbell puts his number two ranking on the line next Friday night at Night of Conflict. He'll be facing the number three ranked Colton Schultz of Colorado. Here to talk about being in the main event is Jared himself. Jared, how are you? Yeah, uh, nice, uh, nice to be on the show. Well, we, we appreciate you, you uh, being on, and, uh, you know, this event, uh, you know, has, has this event been something that you've heard of before out in Ohio? I mean, we're an Iowa-based wrestling site, so is this something that you've heard of or just – uh, from hearing from me, I guess uh, got you interested. Um, I've you know I've seen it on Flow Wrestling, and uh, I saw the event last year. I watched a little bit of it, and I thought it was pretty cool. And you know, I thought it'd be a great opportunity to wrestle some good competition. And you're you're putting your number two ranking on the line in less than thirty days against Colton Schultz. Are you are you are you mean pumped up for this match? Are you are you nervous? What are your thoughts uh, on taking this match? Um, I'm always pumped up to compete. You know, I love competing and I love training and love getting ready to go out there on the big stage and showing what I have to offer and wrestling somebody who's as good as he is. You know, I love doing that and it's great for the sport. Yeah, Schultz is a, a guy that he was on the Cadet Greco team, uh, the world team. What do you know about his wrestling and what sor sort of things are you preparing for, for his style? Um... I know he's just a great Greco guy, and he's great with the upper body ties and stuff. So I'm just going to stick with what I want to do and make him wrestle my pace and my match and wrestle the positions I want to wrestle in. And I don't really change much when I wrestle, even if somebody's got some crazy moves like he does. But I just want to wrestle my style as much as I can and uh, stick with it. You know, out of Ohio, uh, St. Edwards, uh, you know, do you know how many years – in a row that your high school has produced a Division One All-American by chance? 
Um, I want to say 27 or 28. In a row? We're around there. Yep. Holy cow. I uh we did not I I I've got a number here and it's not even close to that. I didn't think it was that many. So, 27 Division 1 All-Americans have come from from your school. It, did you grow up? Did you grow up in St. Edwards or did you come in, you know, at a young age? Um, I came in at a real young age like uh I started wrestling for the club program that feeds into St. Edwards when I was about 4th grade. And I mean, I live an hour from school, so I drive an hour to school every day here. But um you know, it's worth it coming up here and getting the competition and the coaching that I do. So, it's a obviously a testament to your passion for the sport and and what you're looking to accomplish. It's propelled you to number two ranked in the country, and um, you know you've you've committed to you've committed to Missouri and the coaches that have gotten you there. It sounds like John Heffernan actually he's going to be bringing you out to. Uh, to the event, I mean, what what has he done for you? I mean, is he is he the main coach that has helped you get to this point to get you to the point where you've been able to commit to a Division One school? Um, I'd say yes, but also no at the same time. You know, we have a lot of different coaches in the room, and all of them try to help every single kid as much as they can. And you know, uh, definitely Coach Danny Gonzer, who went to Missouri for a year, he's helped me a lot. And then uh, also my coach uh, Gus Seiko. Who was an all-American? I don't know if he was an all-American or not, but he went to Virginia. So you know, those three main guys have really helped me throughout my years and got me where I am today. Who else is going to be coming with you to the conflict? Are they planning on wrestling in the van, or are they just going to come to help you uh, warm up for uh, your matchup with Colton? Um, I'm not really sure yet, but I know he said he's bringing uh, about eight or seven of my teammates out with me, you know, to come watch and uh, maybe wrestle in the event. So. Perfect. It'll well, be fun. Yeah, well, well, let's, we're looking forward. We already mentioned that you, you've you committed to, to wrestle at Missouri uh, next fall. Do you – are there plans for you to maybe continue that streak at, at university right out of the gate? Are you planning on maybe in red shirting, or uh, what are your thoughts? Um, I've already been told that uh, I'm for sure going to red shirt my first year just to see where I fit in the lineup and uh, see if I'm going down to 197 or heavyweight. So – Coach Coach Smith is a regular on on this program, and uh, it's no secret of how he is getting recruits in and the way he does handles his business. But you know what what made you pick the Missouri Tigers? Um, definitely uh, just the success they've had in their upper weights. You know Ben Askren, Jaden Cox. You know all those guys have laid down the brickwork for some great things to come, and uh, I just wanted to be a part of that. Sounds great. Well, hey, we appreciate you you traveling all the way to this event to be in the Night of Conflict. It's going to be in our second year uh, of, of the event, October 14th at Carver Hockey Arena. Get your tickets now. At uh, VIP tickets are still available. They have been going fast here, but you can check that out at iewrestle.com. We will see you. Uh, we'll see you soon, and we're going to see you some of that Rudis gear. That's an uh, Ohio-based uh, company, so we're excited about that too. But uh, we'll we'll talk to you soon. All right. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm fired up about this match, but really the whole card for that matter. Again, you can find your tickets at the address you see on your screen or watch all the action on flowwrestling.com. After the break, we'll take a look at our quick hits from around the country. You're watching Global Wrestling News, powered by Yellow Blue Ecotech. to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. 
While sauces and seasons are our business, Food is our passion, and we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our Wings and Things hot sauce on everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award-winning too. Wings and Things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA. Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram 133 or on my website, teamramos.co. All right, welcome back to GWN. It's time for quick hits. Tony, let's go back to the main event of Flo's Who's Number One. In the first ever meeting between two-time world team member Tony Ramos and three-time All-American Cody Brewer, Brewer hit four takedowns in under two minutes and went on to end the main event on a four-point throw. How much is this going to hurt the stock of Tony Ramos, his confidence, and perhaps just the brand overall? Well, he tweeted out uh, that he'll be back soon, soon after the match he did, and it, he just did not look good on his feet. Almost seemed like his feet were in sand and cement. He just could not get anything going. You know, Brewer's always been known for somebody that is, is somebody that's constantly on the tack, has high confidence, like, Bra uh, like Ramos, but maybe that uh, kind of took a hit a little bit at the Olympic team trial. So, you know, uh, but he has he's had a lot on his plate moving to North Carolina, the whole change from Iowa, North Carolina, he has a new kid on the way. Uh, so this is, uh, there's lots of distractions, but this is where money's on the line. Tony Ramos is all about money and he didn't get it. On the flip side is Cody Brewer, now the guy at 61 kilos. I've never even seen him in a freestyle match. I mean, we still know nothing about Cody Brewer when it comes down to it. Well, Br Brewer is relentless from his feet, not afraid to take those risks. And the, really, the, it's kind of the new trend in wrestling in America. But when you get overseas, that, that over-aggressive style can get you in trouble, can get you some throws. So he's going to have to find a, a good defense. Well, again, we don't, like you said, we don't know a whole lot about his right. freestyle experience uh, or, or his style. So once we see him on the international scene, see him in more freestyle matches here in the country, we can really say whether or not he's going to be the next team member. Well, in a recent blog post titled Dear Wrestling, Olympic legend Jordan Burroughs wrote that he's considering retirement. In an excerpt, he writes, when you stop seeing gold, you gain the clarity to see life's true treasures. Maybe I'll see you around. Maybe. Have we seen the last of perhaps one of the greatest wrestlers of all time? Well, the, his blog came out, and then uh, you know, Flo put out there that it was really kind of taking it out. I don't want to say out of context, but it, you just really kind of overreacted maybe to the blog. Jordan Burroughs now has come out and said that he's not retiring. So I totally get why people thought that this might be a, his uh, his way into retirement, but. There's no way he walks away from the sport. He's got, got too high of a stock, too many sponsors. I mean, I guess he could walk away if maybe these, these sponsors don't want him to wrestle. I mean, he does have a good social media presence. But, you know, the, I think where he gets his money, where he pays for his family is on the mat. I mean, Tony, I know he's heartbroken, but I believe that he's still the best in the world. I believe he would like to come back and prove it to himself. Either way, it's been an absolute honor to have him on the mat. Yeah, whether he steps away competitively, it doesn't. I guess it really is not going to hurt our sport because he's he will be involved still. He'll still be a role model. He'll be coaching somewhere. I gotta imagine, anyways. That'd be a hard way to step away from the whole sport in general. So I'm excited to see the next chapter of his life, whether it's on the mat or uh, you know coaching. All American Ryan Milhoff announced that he would transfer from Oklahoma to Arizona State. Milhoff asked for his release after Mark Cuddy resigned as head coach. Pretty surprising to see him land at ASU, though. I thought he perhaps would follow Kendrick Maple to Purdue. Well, and Milhoff uh, will be redshirting this uh, this upcoming season, so this is I mean, an amazing scenario for Arizona State. They keep landing these big the big recruits, some transfers. Uh, this is uh, I, I can't believe Arizona State still got money. I know they had it when Jones got there, but he's been spending it, I'm assuming, anyways, uh, by landing all these big guys. So they're going to be a threat soon. I, a threat soon yeah i think so look at asu's lineup Sertzis, milhoff the valencia boys and tanner hall this team's going to challenge for a national title and i think it's going to be sooner than later well arizona state continues to make those big moves you know they're getting these big transfers 
top five team, you know, it could happen quickly. I, I think Arizona State just, uh, you know, they have a lot to offer when it comes to their recruits. So if they can keep landing these guys, getting them on campus, that's the biggest thing I think that he's got going for them. They can land them on campus. They're getting 90% of the guys because it's Arizona State. We all know that uh, what, what goes on there. Beautiful scenery. Beautiful scenery. Beautiful girls. Three-time Pennsylvania State placer Brian Courtney has committed to the University of Virginia. Courtney is ranked 23rd overall in the class of 2017 and joined 7th ranked Cameron Coy, also from Pennsylvania. Now, this is a huge commit for the Cavs. Steve Garland can recruit. Yeah, this is uh, anytime you can pick somebody up like this this quality prior to the season, it is, it's a good little weight off your shoulders mm -hmm. for, for going in there because you got to find specific spots for your team going forward. That way you can focus on the next weight class. So great get out of for him. All right. Lots of commitments out there. You know what I'm committed to? Wrapping up this program, we're out of time. For Tony Hager, Brad Johnson, and The Balance, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week on another exciting edition of Global Wrestling News. Thanks for watching.